All right, in the last video, we ended up kind of stuck because we were trying to construct our very first statistical learning theoretic bound, but it didn't work. In fact, um, it just completely fails uh, for any reasonable learning algorithm. But I didn't explain why that was, so I, I want to do that. Okay, so here's the bound we get for Huffington's inequality, which says that uh, with high probability, we got a handle on the true risk. Okay, so that's what we wanted. So what's wrong with that? Why, where does that go wrong? And the reason it, it's, the reason it goes wrong is because it assumes that the function f is sort of a known quantity, that it's known before you look at the data. But what learning algorithm do you know that doesn't, what algorithm, learning algorithm do you know that doesn't depend on data? Right? That's not a reasonable learning algorithm. It doesn't look at the data. It just fixes the function in advance. So um, in fact, the truth is that, uh, that the, the function f is a random variable. And so what we really want is that with high probability for fn, the function we chose after looking at the data, that, that we've got a handle on the true risk. Okay? So we want that with probability at least 1 minus delta for the function our algorithm is going to pick the true risk of that function is less than the empirical risk plus some stuff, okay? So then in that case, when we measure the things on the right-hand side, we know the, we know the uh, thing on the left-hand side is um, small. Okay, cool. So that's what we want. Uh, we're going to achieve that kind of in a circular way. Um, and in particular, we're going to, um, we're going to bound the difference between the empirical risk and the true risk for all functions in the whole class so that it doesn't even matter which function our algorithm is going to pick. Um, for any function the algorithm is going to pick, we'll get this kind of guarantee on the true risk. Okay, cool. So um, let me just give you a bit more detail about this because, you know, if for the first 10,000 times you think about it, you're like, well, you know, I don't think it's that bad that fn depends on the data. Why is this, you know, it's just maybe some technicality. But no, actually, this really is a bad problem. And so let me try to explain to you in pictures why this is bad. Okay, so um, for each fixed function in the loss class, there's a set of good data sets. Okay, and those, and those good data sets, the, the true risk is not that much worse than the empirical risk. However, this set of data sets, um, you know, it's, it's, it's good, it has, you know, high probability, but it um, can be different for different G. So if you pick a different function G, there's a different set of data sets for which the true risk and empirical risk are close. Okay, why does that matter? Okay, so let's plot, um, I'm just going to put the, plot the functions along the horizontal axis. I know it's a bit abstract, but let's just go with the flow here. So put the functions on the horizontal axis, and then I'm going to plot the true risk, okay? So the true risk is fixed. It's not random. Um, you have to know the whole distribution of data to calculate it, which we don't, but I'm just going to plot it assuming I know everything. And then Hofting's inequality gives us this kind of, uh, kind of a band around the true risk. And Huffington's inequality says that for fixed f with high probability, the empirical risk is in a band. Okay, so if I pick a data set at random, I can plot the empirical risk for the data set and it looks like this. Okay, so again, Huffington's inequality says that given a function, most of the data sets are good. So you would expect to see that most of the time the um, empirical risk is fairly close to the true risk, like I've drawn it. I mean, occasionally it pops out, right? Huffington's inequality allows for a probability of delta of that happening. But most of the time, the empirical risk and the true risk are close. And um, I could do this for any number of data sets I want to. Um, this is for another data set that I chose randomly. Um, and again, most of the time, the empirical risk and true risk are close. However, there are a few times where the empirical risk and true risk are very different from each other. And um, again, this only happens with probability delta, but which, um, which function am I going to choose when I minimize the empirical risk? Well, it's exactly that one. It's exactly the point where the overfitting occurred. Okay, so, um, and you should expect this to happen fairly often because an ex the extreme values of the empirical risk are exactly where the, uh, 
the empirical risk is minimized. And that's exactly where you are most in danger of overfitting. It's where the empirical risk is really low. And so that's bad. That's where the problem is. Okay, so um, we really, really need to make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen. And in fact, if our function class is really large, like if you have a huge number of functions, that just leads to more opportunities to find a function f where the distance between the empirical risk and the true risk is large. That's bad. So um, what we're going to do is create a bound that says that with high probability, the empirical risk and true risk are close for all functions in the class so that the thing that I showed you up there um, doesn't actually happen. In other words, if a, a data set is good, it's good for all the functions in the class and it always stays within that band. And these bounds, when we create them, they're called uniform bounds because they hold uniformly for all functions in the whole class. And we'll show you some of those shortly. Thanks.